so these are the types of cuffs so that can be uh, uh, there are a uh, few types of tracheostomy tubes which we need to be familiar with okay so tracheostomy tubes can be metal we do see metal these are not very expensive yes but uh, these are not very um, uh, doctor friendly or uh, patient friendly okay so this is uh, a tracheostomy tube which is made of stainless steel or silver it has as you see there is an outer cannula this is what we see and this inner cannula snugly fits into uh, the tracheostomy tube and this is an obturator there is an obturator which helps in cleaning the tracheostomy tube so the disadvantages are that it doesn't have you cannot connect the patient to a ventilator when the patient is on a metal tracheostomy tube this is mostly used for patients who need only suction and they can be off ventilator and uh, they don't uh, need a frequent cleaning or anything this uh, has no cuff so it doesn't prevent aspiration okay so uh, this is a silver tube three parts okay no cuff there is a flange which is also a metal and there are clips which uh, holds the inner cannula inside uh, the outer cannula okay okay so uh, there are other tubes which are synthetic and they are quite uh, tracheal friendly we can say so synthetic tubes companies are portex shyly uh, we most common used tube is portex so pvc silicon is also uh, uh, there are also certain tubes uh, which uh, give an extra proximal length with the uh, adjustable flange it is for obese patient who has a lot of neck fat so the proximal or a distal length needs to be adjusted okay so that those tubes are also available so there are also some special tubes uh, these are called fenestrated tubes so we can see in this um, picture that there are uh, some holes on the outer cannula and similar place similar site in the inner cannula there are uh, holes okay so these are fenestrated tubes once inside the trachea they allow air to enter in even if there is a cuff uh, the air enters into the trachea through the these holes it can be uh, there can be air flow through the mouth and nose also this helps in more of a vocalization okay so with the inner cannula removed and the cuff deflated tracheostomy uh, air passage even if they secluded the patient cannot can inhale and exhale because the fenestrations are there but it, the flow will not be very adequate but definitely uh, there will not be any total occlusion and there will be definitely movement of air uh, from the trachea to the mouth even if the tube is occluded so what are the choice of how do we select our tracheostomy tube so uh, it is based on the need uh, if the if you uh, think that the patient will have a lot of aspiration risk uh, patient needs to be on positive ventilation for quite some time uh, maybe overnight ventilation overnight uh, uh, bipap uh, support the patient can be on cuffed tubes okay so uncuffed it is only uh, if the patient has good spontaneous breathing doesn't need ventilation and good cough reflex is there just for secretions to be cleared we can use this uncuffed tube and fenestrated it is more of a weaning um, uh, tube and it allows vocalization psychologically the patient will get more comfort okay so the outer cannula has fenestrations and inner there are two inner cannulas which can be used one inner cannula has uh, fenestration and other doesn't so when we really don't need to allow uh, air to pass through or the patient is sleeping the patient needs positive pressure ventilation we can use the other inner cannula which doesn't have the fenestration so fenestration tubes can be used in both ways so that's one more advantage of those so tube size in adults we use uh, usually uh, 7.5 anywhere between 7.5 to 8.5 7.5 8 8.5 tubes are available so uh, we need to know that we shouldn't be putting too long tubes or too short tubes for very obvious reasons too long tubes are going to cause um, uh, irritation on the uh, carina patient will be having very uh, uh, excessive cough uh, they will have a lot of secretion due to constant irritation and sometimes uh, the air will be passing into only one lung it might reach the bronchi and there can be only unilateral ventilation if the tube is too short then it is uh, going to uh, not serve the purpose there will be a lot of uh, air leak and ventilation will not be adequate there will be a lot of ulceration on the posterior tracheostomy wall it will be moving and hitting towards all the walls and causing a lot of irritation and necrosis so tube size is very important okay so choice of the tubes whether cuffed or uncuffed and what is the size of the tube is also very important what why we choose which tube is a very important thing because we are uh, tampering with the natural physiological process or uh, whatever is happening in the airway 
so we need to make sure that uh, we know we are comfortable using the tracheostomy but is the patient comfortable